Welcome to Sunday School, yet another exciting time in the presence of the Lord. I pray that the Lord will grant us understanding as we go in depth into his word in Jesus' name. Today we are going to be talking about the origin of sin. The origin of sin, lesson six. But before we go into this topic, I want us to just have a short prayer. Father, enlighten me on the origin of sin. That's our prayers this morning, O oh God, that you cause forth our eyes to be opened unto the deep things concerning your word. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now the topic says the origin of sin. The origin of sin. Now because we are in Sunday school, there are two key words in that topic, origin and sin. And we are going to be defining the two words. The first one is origin. What does origin mean? Origin means the point or a place where something begins. The point or a place where something begins. The starting point. And sin means disobedience to God or an immoral act considered to be a transgression against the divine law. Invariably, when we are talking about the origin of sin, we mean how did sin start or how did sin began. Praise the Lord. Now, that takes us to the Bible passage that talks about you know, how sin began. And that is taken from Ezekiel 28, from verse 13 to 15. And it says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardos, topaz, and the diamond, the bell, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, and the workmanship of the tablets, and of the pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherubim that cover it, and I have set thee so, and thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways. Thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Now I want us to look at verse 15. Don't forget that we are talking about the origin of sin. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So that means that the devil was created without flaws. But there came a day when iniquity began to come up in his heart. And then he began to do those things that were not right before God. He began to, to equate himself with God. And when that came up, the Lord God Almighty had to send him out of his kingdom. Praise the Lord. We are looking at the origin of sin. Now that takes us to the Bible, to the memory verse. The memory verse is taken from Psalm 51 verse 5. Psalm 51 verse 5. And it says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. It's a memory verse, and it's a verse that we need to learn to say it off by heart. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Another Bible version says, Behold, I was conceived in sin. Another one says, Behold, I was brought forth in sin. Now we are looking at this birth by our parents. This is the birth by our parents. Now we are conceived in sin. That is, we, were, we had sin as our nature when we came into the world. But then there is another rebirth. That is, when you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, all your sins have been erased. Praise the Lord. Now, I would like to introduce this topic, the origin of sin, by saying that a lot of historians and theologians have things to say about how sin started. A lot of them have their different perceptions. A lot of them have come with different, you know, uh, different uh, ways of saying that, oh, sin started like this, sin started like this. But today, we are in Sunday school and we are going to be using the manual, the manual which is the Bible. We are going to be opening it and going to be digging still into the scripture. And it's going to be expanding to us how sin exactly started. Now, that takes us to the first lesson outline. that talks about debunking the myth about sin. Debunking the myth about sin. Now, because we are in Sunday school, there are some words that we do not just allow to slide. 
we need to know the exact meaning of this word so that we can be able to understand what we are actually talking about. Debunk and myth are two words there that we need to know the meaning. Now, what is it? What's the meaning of to debunk? To debunk means to show that something is less important. To show that something that is less important, less good, or less true that has been made to appear. There are some things that have been made to appear to be true, but they are not. And then what is a myth? A commonly believed but a false idea. And so, invariably, when we are saying debunking the myth about sin, it simply means to show that what people generally believe about sin is false. What people generally believe about the origin of sin is not true. And we're going to be answering some popular questions that people pop up when we're talking about the origin of sin. Now, the first question is, did the Bible mean that God is the creator of sin when it attributes the source of all creation to God? Did the Bible mean that God is the creator of sin when it attributes the source of all creation to God? The answer is definitely no. But most people use this scripture, Isaiah 45 verse 7, to say that, oh, God actually is the creator of sin. Now, if you go to Isaiah 45 verse 7, what it tells us is that I will form the light and I create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do these things. Now, this is the popular scripture that most people feel that when they God read this scripture, it means that God is the creator or the originator of sin. The evil that God is, that the scripture is talking about there is not, is not the evil of sin. It's talking about the disasters. Now, you do not take a scripture in isolation. We look at the scripture preceding verses, the scripture itself, and then the scripture, the verses after. Now, when this Isaiah 45, 7 is saying, I form the light and I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do these things. What he has been saying here is that God is sovereign in all things. But even as at that, God is not the one that create, that is the creator of sin. It is man that is the creator of sin. It is man that, that, that sins. It is not God that creates sin. God has created us. But because man is drawn out of his own lust, like in James 1.13 tells us, we see ourselves falling into sin. Praise the Lord. Now, we also need to know that evil originated from the Creator, like I said, not the Creator. In other words, sin was not part of the original creation, nor was it decreed by God, by what was it decreed by the Creator's will. Now, another question that is popularly asked is that, are there hints about the origin of sin? Are there hints? Are there other hints about the origin of sin? Now, one of the answers is that the first man, Adam, sinned and his transgression spiraled mankind into sin. But this was not the origin of sin. Oh yes, Adam and Eve sinned. They are forefathers. We inherited the sin. But this was not the origin of sin. In Ezekiel 28, 13-15, like we read, it speaks figuratively about Satan, who was originally created without any flaw. As all things created by God, we are good. But then... If you look at verse 15, it says, You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. And we also look at Isaiah 14, 12 to, 12 to 14. It further indicates that Satan, Lucifer, in his pride and his wanting to equate himself with God, you know, began to do those things that God was not happy about. Satan began to take his place as if he was God. He became so arrogant, he was filled with pride. And that was why the Lord God Almighty had to make him leave his kingdom. Praise the Lord. So when we're talking about debunking the myth about sin, these are some popular questions that people pose up that says that, oh, sin, or the origin of sin, they started from Adam, or that God is the one that is behind sin. It is not. It is the, the creature, not the creator. I hope you get me right. It is the creation itself, not God who is the creator. Praise the Lord. Now, that takes us to the second lesson outline. Sin is a deficiency. Let's not forget that we are talking about the origin of sin. And the first lesson outline talks about debunking the myth of sin. Now, the second one says sin is a deficiency. We are in Sunday school. And so we are going to break down the meaning of the word deficiency. When you say somebody is deficient or something is, is, is a deficiency, what do we mean? It means lack. 
it means shortage. So sin is a deficiency. It means if you have sin in your life, there's bound to be a lack of several blessings from God. That means you lack the presence of God. You lack the blessings of God. You lack everything that God ought to give to a child who do not have sin. Praise the Lord. And so that takes us to one of the questions also that I mean comes up under this lesson outline. Is evil a creature? Is evil a creature? Evil is not a creature. Evil is not an independent being. Evil has no standards or goodness or anything. Evil is an action. Evil is an action. Evil is a lack of deficiency and a falling short of the standards of God's perfect will. All sins, no matter how trivial it is, when you have committed sin, you have fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans 3.23, it says that, you know, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God is always consistent in his perfect nature. God is persistent. When you're talking about sin as a deficiency, it doesn't mean that God is going to tolerate sin. He's a sovereign God. He's a God that does not want us to sin. And so as long as we are in sin, you know, we are beginning to fall short of the glory of God. The next one says that what is at the core of all sin? What is at the core of all sin? All sin, therefore, must come from the creation. All sin must come from the creature. That is, we that are created by God, sin comes from us. The desire to do evil comes from us. Evil is not a being. Evil is an action. Evil is something that we do that does not please God. And so all sin, therefore, comes from the creature. And the desire of evil comes from within the creature. Now, we also want to say that sin was found in Lucifer. Because it was a choice that he made to seek something other than what God has chosen for him. I know oftentimes people ask, is God unaware when we sin? Is God unaware when Lucifer sinned? No, God was not unaware. We ask, we serve a God that is omnipotent, omnipresent. He's the God that knows everything. He's everywhere. He knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. So God was not unaware at all about the sin of Lucifer. But we also need to know that God has given us the mind to choose. He has given us that spirit of choice. So oftentimes when the Lord calls us to him, most of the time he has given us choice. It is when we are drawn out of our own lust that we go off the pathway of righteousness and we find ourselves in sin. No, he also says that sin originated from God's creature does not mean that God is not surprised or caught unaware. Now, God does not need God does not need to compel us to do things because He doesn't want us to sin. No, He doesn't want to script His creation of their own free will, and so because of that, He has given us choice. Now, if we go to Mark eight verse thirty four, it says, "Whoever will come after me, let him deny himself." and take his cross and follow me, whoever. So that means that you have your choice. Another scripture also talks about Revelation 3, 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I would come in. It's a matter of choice. If anyone hears my voice, it's a matter of choice. And then finally, in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him. So it is choice. So we have a life of choice. God has laid it on the table for us. That is why when he, Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, in, in Genesis 2.16, he told them that in this particular fruit, this tree, this tree of life and evil, do not eat. If you eat, you would surely die. But for every other fruit in the garden, you can eat. He gave them a choice. And they decided to eat the forbidden fruit. Students of the Sunday school, God has given us choice. But he doesn't mean he's not unaware where we're going to sin. And the Lord will grant us more understanding in the name of Jesus. As we come to the end of this topic, the origin of sin, I want us to know that God is not the author of sin, but his creatures. He's not the author of sin. It is his creatures that are the author of sin when we are drawn from our own lust. You can overcome sin by giving your life to Jesus Christ and choose to be holy. 
course, you can overcome sin by giving your life to Jesus and choose to be holy because without holiness, we cannot see God. Sin will definitely keep you away from God completely. And our choice this morning, and I believe that the choice of all of us that are part of the Sunday School this morning is to choose to be holy and live a life that is pleasing unto God. Praise the Lord. I just want us to have this closing prayer as we come to the end of the topic, the origin of sin. Father, I refuse to partner with the devil. Please destroy every work of sin in my life in Jesus' name. Lord, we refuse to partner with the devil. Please destroy every work of sin in our lives and make us live a holy life in Jesus' name we pray. I want to thank you for being part of the Sunday School this morning. And I want to believe that next week Sunday is another time, Sunday School, and next week topic is talking about biblical description of sin. This is the time that we are going into the depths of the Word of God. I do not want you to miss it. And I believe that the Lord God Almighty will grant us understanding as we go deep into His Word in Jesus' name. As we move into a new week, I pray that the Lord will be with us and that you will enjoy the euphoria of God's presence all the way. God bless you. Let's go on the Lord's day. I rejoice to see you.